A good teacher is someone who explains everything very clearly, first of all. A good teacher cares about her students a lot and how they're doing in their class, which is very passionate and engaged in the classroom. My name is Lillian Chong, and my research is in the area of computational biophysics, so I'm in a very interdisciplinary research area. Really good day for me in teaching is if it really is more of a conversation with the students in the classroom rather than me just being up there lecturing to them. There's a number of courses that I've been teaching, the physical chemistry classes, the quantum chemistry course, and also a computational drug discovery course. Physical chemistry is, people usually take it in their junior to senior years and it's considered one of the hardest courses in the major. <laughs> Last semester we were talking about quantum mechanics, which is tiny little particles that no one ever sees. And the idea is like, if you're not looking at it, it's probably not there or it might be there. And nobody really knows what's going on with these types of things. But when she like explains all the materials, she does so really clearly, she goes through every step and make sure we follow her. The way her class was structured, it was very open to discussion. So students who could ask questions during class and they needed help, she would ask questions to us for us to, to see what we understood and for us to try to explain things in our own words. I try as hard as possible to cultivate this atmosphere in the classroom so that everyone is comfortable asking their questions and making mistakes. Whenever any student asks a question, even if it's tangential, I will turn it into something that informs the whole class. Any question that you ask uh, is helpful. One of the main goals is to teach the students how to be sophisticated problem solvers, and that's something that I think is very valuable for anything that you do after you graduate. Instead of just lecturing out, she actually talks to students, asks questions, and tries to understand what students understand and tries to work with that. I could see that in my lab, some of the undergraduates in there, that something that was really holding them back was this tendency to do everything perfectly. You know, in, in reality, with research, it's often these mistakes that you make that lead to new, exciting discoveries. Just unlearn that stigma to making mistakes, you know, to make mistakes on purpose, to get a deep understanding of everything. She's very friendly, so you can you feel like you can talk to her. And she really does care how we do in her class. If there's any problems, she makes herself very available to us. She was one of the first professors where I found that environment. It is kind of an environment where we can interact with each other. Every time that I've taught these courses, I've learned different ways of viewing the material. I love to see the curiosity from the students that comes up in the classroom. Even if you don't perform as well as you'd hoped on an exam, there's a lot of other ways to show that you do understand the material. And she definitely gives you these opportunities to prove yourself. She helps a lot of different people throughout her own career. She's sort of role model in terms of research and as well as a role model as a teacher. It's really been an honor to teach at the Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences. I love how the faculty are deeply committed to the education of the undergraduates here. I took on this job because I was very lucky to have some mentors along my pathway um, that were particularly nurturing. I really wanted to have that kind of impact on other people and on students um, in the same way that it impacted me and that's been very rewarding. It really makes my day to, to teach. Even if there's just one student in the classroom that lit up, that makes me very happy.